I think my earliest memory, although I would have expected it to be something in the courtroom, it wasn't. It was, it was San Antonio. It was the first time that I really thought, I like this guy. Because we were, a group of us walking down the street, and this car comes along, this low rider, and starts honking and screaming out the window at us, you know, cat calls. And I insisted to him that was because of the fit of his khakis. And he was quite embarrassed by that comment. And he turned beet red, and I thought, this is just going to be fun. And from that moment on, I just, I, I truly enjoyed his company for a number of reasons, but that, that's kind of what got me started on him. So, My first memory of, of, of Kurt Henderson was I was a misdemeanor prosecutor. And my office and his office shared a common wall. And on Thursdays, misdemeanor prosecutors did intake at their desk Thursday mornings. In the first or second week I was a prosecutor in this office, I knew Kurt Henderson had come down from Docket because he would come down so angry and he would fling files into the wall and they would hit right where my head was. And the first time it happened, I just <laughs> spilled coffee, jumped, went around to see what it was. It was Kurt Henderson coming back from Docket. First of all, one of the things that people probably do not know about my relationship with Judge Henderson, and I know Cindy's probably going to be hearing this for the first time, but I actually had a horrible crush on him in the early years when he had hair. He did have hair at one time, and, um, and I had to temper my feelings about him because I knew he was such a straight lace, and then of course I have my own husband to think about. But I've always just admired him so much. And my um, very first trial in Collin County was in front of Judge Henderson. And it was a criminal trial. I was actually representing, um, well, I won't name names, but I'm sure Judge Henderson remembers this. And I remember him, I remember asking him one time, I said, do you remember that first trial I had in your court? Probably not. He said, oh, yes. <laughs> my first memory of dealing with Judge Henderson was actually when he was with the well-known Collin County firm of Grubbs and Shapiro. And I, at the time, was working with Boyd Weigel. We had a case against each other, and it was not a family law case. It was not a criminal law case. It was a, a very um, dry matter dealing with an apartment complex. And although we never got to trial, Judge Henderson did take a deposition in that case. And I have to be honest with you, he drove me absolutely crazy. The deposition, of course, took so many more hours than I thought it should take, and he went into so much more detail than I could stand that I, I, just, I just thought I was going to go crawling out of my skin before it was over. Of course, um, payback is always tough, and of course, he undoubtedly has gotten so tired of hearing me and virtually every other lawyer drone on and on and on in his courtroom that in the long run uh, I would say that we got the better end of the deal. One of my earliest memories of Judge Henderson was um, probably 91 or 92 when Legal Aid decided to test the waters for a free legal clinic in the county. And um, you can imagine it was not met with uh, unanimous support. But as always seemed to be the case, one voice stood strong in support of us, and that was Judge Henderson. There were two real memories I have of Judge Henderson. One was the initial welcome to my court, this is what I expect my prosecutors to do lecture. And, it, and the phrase that he used repeatedly, and I had heard with every prosecutor before was, if you're waiting on me, you're backing up. And it was very true. If he said he was going to be on the bench in five minutes, you had better be at your desk at 4.59, because at five minutes he was coming through. And at five minutes and five seconds he was sending the bailiff out to bring in the jury, whether or not you were at your station. My experience with him as a lawyer appearing before a judge as, as I really had so much respect for him and one of the things I never wanted to do was was not be so totally prepared that he might think 
I didn't um, have have that utmost respect for him. When I went I, when I went into his courtroom, without regard to any other relationship I had with him, I wanted to impress him as an attorney. I didn't want to disappoint him as an attorney. He is absolutely fabulous during any trial. He has a great demeanor about him and he really knows the subject matter. He does his research and uh, he treats everybody with respect, including the court reporter. I also remember another San Antonio memory was when he had broken his, I thought he broke his leg, maybe it was his hip. I just remember he was on crutches. And there are those um, little bridges over the river. And there were probably 10 or 15 of us. And I didn't really know him that well. This is probably only my third or fourth year to go. And so we wanted to make sure that he was not going to fall. And I don't remember who was in front of him, but I was right behind him. And of course, the last thing in the world I thought would happen is that I would actually need to do anything when about, and I'm thinking about this, I'm walking up the steps and I'm thinking, what a strange place to be and what a strange position to be in. And about that time, he started to topple. And I, I just did what one would do instinctively. I put my hands up and I'll be darned if he didn't sit right in my hands. <laughs> and then I kind of pushed him up and he didn't fall. But uh, it was a private joke between us for a very long time. I'm sure there are people who were there that remember um, about that moment. He has a great sense of humor. Um, he's a very, I think he's a private person as far as the bench goes. I mean, he, he wants to make sure they maintain dignity in the courtroom and that, uh, you know, especially me and some other, other lawyers, that are, that are crazy about him. We know the other lawyer on the other side. There's more camaraderie. There's more of that goes on. And he, he always wanted everybody to um, act not just civil, but act serious about the proceeding, which is good. He kept us on his toes. He also required, of course, that everybody know the law, respect the law. Um, he's a good man. I mean, he's an Aggie. I always had to, you, have to, you know, you have to overlook that. But he is an Aggie. And that's a problem. But he's overcome it. Mostly. I've known Judge Henderson since before he was a judge. Uh, he is a, he's a wonderful individual to begin with. Uh, dedicated to the law. Collin County has been very fortunate to have many of the judges that we have and I count him as one of the best that we've ever had in Collin County. Back in Chambers, Judge was a lot different than most people expected. He was funny and he threw out jokes sometimes that it took us a minute to catch because he's so much smarter than all of us. But, you know, by the time we caught it, we were all laughing. What I've been most impressed with Judge Henderson about over the years is the fact that he, he pours himself into his cases. Uh, although I've never been a judge, obviously, I, I can see the strain uh, that all of the district court judges in Collin County are under on a daily basis, handling thousands of, of cases uh, over the course of their careers and uh, being torn and pulled in so many different directions and yet I've consistently seen over the years that, that, that Judge Henderson strives or has striven to not just generate a cookie cutter result for the litigants for the parties whose lives are affected by his rulings he puts a lot of energy and puts a lot of himself uh, into those cases and I think it shows. Something that is very important to me about my memories about Judge Henderson is that I um, and I, I'm finding I wasn't the only one but when I really felt things weren't working for me either a relationship or how a trial was going or how a case was going uh, maybe how things were going in some organization I was in he was somebody that I could go to and he would always give me time as long as I didn't have a case in his courtroom at the time but he would give me his time and his wisdom and his advice and we're pretty close to the same age but I still always really look to him for good sound advice. As, as a legal aid attorney you were not quite sure when you entered a courtroom how your client would be viewed or treated um, but that was never a concern in the 219. Judge Henderson, um, you know, he was revered in the DA's office uh, long before I got there. So when I came on, um, 
you know, what Judge Henderson thought of you was very important as a young assistant district attorney. And on any Judge Henderson's court, he was very thoughtful, you know, he's very formal as well, but he was very good about critiques as well. And I would go in after a trial and say, and he gave me some of the sagest advice. He made me a much better trial lawyer, but he would just, um, he would just give me great advice, never compliments, always critiques. And every once in a while, I would be begging for a compliment. I'm like, baby, we got, we got life. I mean, didn't I do anything well? Sharon, you're not going to improve by me telling you did well. You know, there's things you need to improve, and that's what we need to work on. But anyway, um, I love Judge Anderson. I had a case, and it was with Brian Lockmiller. And I was, I believe George Parker was actually on one side of the case. Brian was on the other side of the case, and I was the ad litem. That was before the days of an amicus attorney. And Brian and I were not getting along. Nothing new about that story, okay? I, I think Brian and I get along just fine today. But at the time, and on this case, we were not getting along. And that was very obvious. And about that time, the judge uh, has... Um, I believe he had um, John come up, and he whispered something to John. And in a few minutes, so John leaves the courtroom. In a few minutes, John comes back and hands him something. And then the judge says, you two are going to go across the street over there to the pantry, and you're going to have lunch. And about that time, he opened up his checkbook, and he wrote a check, and he said, I'm paying for it. And you're going to go over there, and you're going to sit at the pantry, and you're going to talk until you figure out how to get along. And I know the judge has always thought that was a very, very creative thing to do. And since one of, his, um, one of the things he's well known for is coming up with very creative solutions to problems, I have to agree with him that that was, that was probably about the most creative thing I, I had seen him do up to that point. This is a man who has done so much for the Collin County Bar, the Collin County Judiciary, and Collin County in general. He's the one who brought us to the forefront in technology. He's the one that started, or if not started, was uh, very in the forefront on for kids' sake. He's the one that brought all the uh, great opportunities for lawyers to get on the internet and download uh, discovery and scheduling orders and uh, form orders. He's, he's the one who came up with the Henderson Rule, which is still going to be talked about long after he's gone. Well, um, you know, I'm not very creative, but I've heard lots of other people call him a geek. Oh, excuse me, Judge Henderson. I guess we all know that you are Mr. Technology, which is something that I love and that I appreciate. And I want to thank you for bringing Texas Judge uh, and Collin County to the forefront of the technology era uh, in the whole judiciary in the state of Texas. Um, of course, he's always known as being patient and compassionate and fair-minded and absolutely the best poker face on the planet. Not a single one of us can know what he's thinking any time that we've got a case going on, which, by the way, is very frustrating. He's truly a gentleman. He is almost solely responsible for setting up the uh, modernization of our court system through computerization. And, and since he's done that, I haven't understood the court system since. But I've still tried to cooperate. Some of the good times we've had, probably six or seven years ago, we joined the same golf club at the same time. He came by my office, said, I'm ready to join, you ready to join? I said, sure, let's go. So we went and joined the Golf Club McKinney. And since that time, we've played a ton of golf. Probably 500 rounds would be a, a good guess. Um, I've seen him go from being a very, very terrible avid golfer to a pretty average avid golfer. But he loves golf. That's, that's what he lives for. Uh, his goal in life, so everyone knows, is to have a logo golf ball from every state in the union, um, and he's only going to buy one if he breaks 100. And I think he's up to two. You know, Judge Henderson, he was very difficult to get to smile. I could get him to smile, but laugh would be out of the damn question, you know. I, I never thought of Judge Henderson as a funny person. Although he could be, and I loved it especially when he came out with one of those little dimple 
uh, responses. I always knew something was going on when he did that. Right before it was time to take the bench when Judge Henderson was still on the bench, you knew that you better be on your P's and Q's at that time because it was like him coming out of the bat cave and redressing and putting on the robe and all you saw was the tail turning the corner. So you saw Judge Henderson's tail, then John running slowly behind him, and then Indu running the other direction. It was really quite funny from my end because all I saw was the back of all of them. Uh, one thing that lawyers need to know about Judge Henderson because you haven't been around him like I have, um, never be on the left side of the fairway when he's teeing off because you might get hit. Well, actually, the fairway, you won't get hit. Just don't be on the left side of the rough. My favorite, one of my favorite things about Judge Henderson is he would tell defense attorneys, okay, you have an hour for board hour. I'll give you more. But understand, if you ask for more, I'm going to give her more. And do you really want a jury to be talking to Sharon Curtis to be talking to a jury for 30 more minutes in the middle of your voir dire. I don't think that's good advice, but if you want to do it, I will do it. But when he was uh, an assistant district attorney and prosecuting a murder case in my court, he forgot to name the, the, the name or establish the name of the victim, the dead person. And uh, it was pretty obvious to me that that was uh, something wrong. And, and uh, a very well-known defense attorney, one of the best in town, as, as a matter of fact, was on the other side. And I could tell he realized it as well. And so I thought it was necessary to ask the witness on the stand, and what did you say the name of the victim was? And you could, should have seen Judge Henderson's face when he realized at the time that he had forgotten that slight little detail. Two words come to mind when I reflect upon his tenure as a jurist, and that's vision and service. And he never said no to anything we asked of him in terms of legal aid, in terms of new projects, in terms of um, new ideas or, uh, or changes in how we might approach something. He, he has the service um, heart, and I don't know that everyone knows how big that is. I, I think uh, what I would like to let be known about Judge Henderson, and it probably already is because he was so much in the forefront, is all his, his te technical contributions to our, to our, um, our bar association and, and our judiciary. I mean, he, he's, he was in the forefront in founding the, the bench bar conference and keeping it going and making it interesting and preparing all those wonderful videos that he shared with us and made a part of our lives. Something I looked forward to every year and I'm sure he spent countless, countless hours doing that. As far as how I see Judge Henderson as a judge on the bench, it's so hard for me sometimes when I would go in there because I'd, I, I had the wonderful privilege of knowing him in other aspects of his life to go in there and, and, and remember that he was not a man sitting on a bench or, or sitting behind that big high desk. He was the state of Texas. He was the law. And so when I was before him, I wasn't his friend. I wasn't his, uh, you know, chum. I wasn't somebody he'd worked with outside of the courtroom. He was the law. And I was a lawyer and my job was to do what the law required. And sometimes that was hard because he did a much better job than I think I could ever have done of separating, compartmentalizing his role as a judge versus his role as a, as a man. As a man, um, I think others have said this, but I have to um, join in saying this, and that is that I can't think of a single man I've ever met that is as good as he is or any better. He's just what I think epitomizes an ethical um, man with lots of integrity and true to his principles. Judge Henderson has had a, a significant impact on how I approach the practice of law. Uh, I've always found him to be a man of integrity, uh, a judge who takes his job seriously, who um, does his best 
to uphold the rule of law without neglecting the, the equitable interest of the parties that are before him. And I've, I've tried to, to take those elements into my own professional life. Uh, and when I'm meeting with clients, when I'm representing individuals, whether it's in front of Judge Henderson or another jurist, uh, I try to keep not only their interest at heart, but also those of the other party. And I feel extremely um, honored that I've had the opportunity to work for one of the best judicial minds, I feel, that I've ever worked for. Judge Henderson has influenced me in a number of ways. He was one of the first judges that I pe appeared before as a not-so-young lawyer, but as a new lawyer. Um, and he, he taught me how lawyers should be treated in the courtroom. Uh, and he taught me about the demeanor of the courtroom. But he also taught me um, that people of faith don't always wear their faith on their sleeve, um, but people of faith can often just simply live it and be examples for all of us um, in their daily lives, in their decision making, um, in their relationships with all of us. He's been an asset to the whole judiciary, uh, whether serving as a judge, whether implementing the changes that were necessary because of the growth of the county through computerization, uh, through uh, his relationship with uh, the bar. Uh, he is just a conscientious individual who's made a great contribution to this county and to the, the bar in general. Because I have so much respect for him, and I believe him and literally in his heart to be such a good person, um, he challenges my worldview. I can't dismiss his ideas just because they are so different than mine, because I respect him so much, and I, I just have so much respect for his intelligence and his heart. Um, he just, I genuinely believe that he is one of the best people I know. Well, I, I wish that he has a, uh, a healthy and happy life full of every blessing, both for him and his wife and his family. <laughs> In his retirement, I wish for him a hundred rounds of golf below a hundred. Um, what else was on his bucket list? He has this extraordinary bucket list that is enviable that um, I always thought mine was um, a challenge, but his is just ex extraordinary. And I wish that he is able to check off everything on that bucket list. It's a pleasure to be in his courtroom. I can't say that about all the courtrooms I've been in, whether you win or lose. Uh, He is truly a gentleman and truly a, a, a benefit to our, our county. For his future, I hope that he has and enjoys his technology, his computer and his iPad and his phones and all of the gadgets that make him happy to tinker with. I hope that he has a financially successful mediation practice because you'll be good at it. I hope he comes back and visits a lot as a visiting judge because um, we always need great judges and I always need a good person that'll critique me and let me know how I can do better. But I think he and his wife are going to have a great time. I think he has he's a great family and great support system. Uh, he has a great heart. I saw him today. I hugged him. Um, you know, we're just blessed and, and Judge Henderson's so awesome. I just hope he doesn't go away. I hope he has fun and uh, he deserves to have fun. Um, but I hope he comes back because we'll miss him.